I believe that this Donald Trump assassination attempt is an occult ritual. A ritual that was done be for the Fifth Kingdom. And I'm going to be bringing out some other information throughout the video here. Um, but you see, the Fifth Kingdom, which I've preached about in the Bible, prophesied in the book of Daniel, that there would be five kingdoms, five world governments. And the last of these five kingdoms would be a mixture of iron and miry clay. The iron is a reference to the Iron Legions of Rome. And the miry clay, there's only one other reference to miry clay in the entire King James Bible, and it's a reference to Israel. Um, man is clay, but when man gets mingled and mixed up, which Israel has been doing for thousands of years, marrying other people that they weren't supposed to marry, and there's one other reference to miry clay, and it's to a reference to Israel. Israel is miry clay now in God's sight. And um, here's where it gets very important. When I first saw this assassination attempt, I saw all the problems with it. I thought about the improbability of being able to be hit in the right ear. And I thought, I don't know how you could get a bullet to go through there. And I started questioning it and whatever. And I said, maybe it was blading. You know, he got a little razor blade out and cut it or something. I don't believe that way anymore. I was waiting till the Band-Aid came off. The big thing there that he had on at the Republican National Convention, then a smaller one. And now it's just off and there are different you know, news reports and things. I'll put some stuff up here showing the proof of it where they're saying there's no damage to his ear. Hmm, very curious. Uh, the official doctor for the White House came out and he said that it left a two centimeter in diameter hole. Uh, that would be noticeable. Okay, uh, my wife, she has the holes in her ears from where she once had earrings. She doesn't wear earrings anymore, but you know what? The holes didn't go away. I've seen people that had the big holes, you know, they put the big huge pieces of wood or whatever through their ears and they take those out, they don't go away. The hole's still there. Um, give you another one to think about. Uh, Evander Holyfield, many years ago, he was boxing uh, Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson bit his ear. Um, bit the top of his ear off. You can see the pictures. Sorry, it's a little bit gross here. But um, <clears throat> his ear still looks like that. Now many years later. And uh, you know they do little photo ops together, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield, and they kind of laugh about it and joke about this thing that happened. Okay, whatever. Uh, all's well that ends well in Hollywood, you know. Um, it's all part of the staged events and whatever else. Um, sure, absolutely. But um, they're all on the same team, like pro wrestling. But um, the point is, when you get an ear injury, it doesn't just magically disappear. Well, then what was the whole assassination attempt thing about? I believe uh, that it is a ritual that was done. And let me explain that ritual. Um, I love my viewers. I have some really good viewers. Some of you are very deep students of the scriptures, and you come up with some things uh, that I'd miss. And uh, one of you talked about the fact that, I mean, it was a couple of you actually, but I saw the one comment, and one of you said about this thing of, back in the book of, um, I think it's Leviticus, where it talks about how that the, the priest, when he would be the sons of Aaron, when they were sanctified for the work of the priesthood that they had blood put on the tip of their ear. I'll show you a picture of it here. Now, uh, just seeing this picture um, and seeing Trump there with the blood on his ear, on his right ear, uh, that gave me chills seeing that. You say, oh, come on, it's just a, some kind of little weird thing that they did if in fact it was staged or whatever else. Um, yeah, but here's the problem. Um, why would he have basically the, this weird occult ritual to have blood put on his right ear? Why? Because I believe he's getting ready to do some sacrificing. Hmm. And you see it actually started with the sacrifice of an innocent individual that died at the rally. That was actually shot. He was the target. Um, maybe not 
um, in the sights or whatever else, the, this uh, firefighter guy or whatever that died, maybe he wasn't intentionally shot, but the bullets that went out into the crowd uh, killed him, an innocent man. And uh, Trump, on the other hand, I don't believe for one minute that there was a, a bullet that hit him in the air. Not for one minute. It would have left a scar, you know, and I mean, you could say whatever you want to say. Well, no, it's possible. It was just a mistake. The bullet, you know, he went for his head and it went off to the side and Trump moved his head at the right time and it went through the... I don't believe it. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I think it's nonsense. Um, and, you know, you can do your little virtue signaling. Well, there was a guy that died in the crowd. Yeah, that was the sacrifice. The first sacrifice, showing the sacrifice of a good man, an innocent man, that had to die uh, for this new system that's being brought in. Um, <clears throat> and the sons of Aaron would get the blood put on their right ear, and then on their right thumb, and then on their right toe. Now, I don't know, but uh, what if Trump had a little bit of blood put on his right thumb and on his toe, and that's why his shoes were off? And isn't it interesting that who was the first leader to come and visit Trump and to see, inspect the ear and everything else? And you can see him going like this to the, before this leader. Oh, that would be uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Huh. Another little uh, New York City papal Yudin. Little boy there from New York City that uh, went over and he's ruler of Israel now. Hmm. Do you understand the fifth kingdom? Do you understand what's going on there? The merger of the Romans and the miry clay, iron and miry clay, part weak, part strong. Hmm. What if Donald Trump has been ordained to be a priest that will cause massive ritual sacrifice coming up? Um, that's what I believe is going to happen. And that's why I believe that they're trying to quickly just, oh, let's forget about it and whatever else. More distractions are coming. They're going to distract the American people so that you don't think about what they did. And all the stuff that doesn't line up and everything else, uh, oh, well, what about the shooter? What about the Secret Service? Why didn't they under understand? Who is Thomas Crooks really? Why was it that there were lies about him? Why is he in a BlackRock commercial? Why is this? Why is that? All this other stuff. Focus on what matters with this. Trump said that he had blood all over his right hand when he went like this and he brought his hand down before he went down. You look at the video, which is being scrubbed from the internet, by the way. Um, I saw a guy did a thing where he searched, asked artificial intelligence about the Trump assassination attempt. Oh, we're sorry. We don't understand. We, you know, we don't have any information on that issue. Mm -hmm. I have to balance this thing. Here I have a hat above my camera to keep it dry. But they're purposefully getting rid of this information. Hmm, very interesting. And um, another one of you, my good viewers out there, another one of you brought up this thing of um, the Abraham Accord or Alliance or whatever else. And I'm going to end this little walk and talk thing here. And we're going to go to the office and I'm going to look up some stuff on it. I actually did a video on that and I'm forgetting what all was done and what all was said and, and whatever. But, um... Uh, Trump definitely has a tie into the nation of Israel, and they're going to be doing some major stuff here uh, with war and with whatever else, um, trying to expand Israel's power and Israel's territory, and um, they're going to use the American people to do it, and a lot of Americans are going to die. I will promise you that, and um, unfortunately, because... Trump has helped to destroy the moral character of the people of America. We have presidents now that use profanity. They never used profanity in the past. That was too low for a president of the United States. And, um, but they're going to use this man to bring this nation down. And the American people, their morale, their morality, I should say, is pretty much completely compromised and destroyed and ruined. So, we're going to be doing another... The end part of this video is going to be about this whole Abraham Alliance thing and whatever that they signed years ago when Trump was in for the first regime. 
And uh, so I'm going to head to the office now and we'll get that done. All right, in this section, I want to talk about this issue right here. The Antichrist Peace Treaty has not been signed. I did this video three years ago. Kind of interesting because I'm wearing, uh, I don't know if it's the same shirt and the same suspenders, but it looks pretty similar. Of course, you can see the difference behind me here. I have my bookshelves now set up and everything else there. So that was when we first were moving into this current office here. But you can watch this video if you want to. And I'm basically just saying that uh, a lot of people are going to say that this is the Antichrist peace treaty that you read about confirming the covenant in Daniel chapter 9, and it's not that at all. Um, it's not an agreement between the Muslims and the Jews. Right? That's a false teaching. A lot of prophecy teachers have taught that down through the years. It's not true. Okay, but getting into this article here um, <clears throat> about this whole thing, and I think this ties in with this whole Trump being ordained as a priest type of a thing. Um, both my wife and my son went through this article here and they both kind of came out with their own you know things that they thought were significant so I'm going to kind of go through the two of these here um, on September, September 15, 2020 US President Donald Trump hosted leaders of Israel and Bahrain as well as the Foreign Minister of the United Arab Emirates at the White House to sign normalization agreements ending the UAE and Bahraini non-recognition of the Jewish state so what Trump is trying to do here is he's trying to bring the Muslims and the Jews together. Um, hmm. uh, let's get down here a little bit. Uh, this is kind of an interesting thing here. Two Arab states normalizing relations with Israel is a big deal no matter what way you look at it. Um, they're messing around with Bible prophecy is what they're doing, to be quite frank with you. And um, I'll show you here in a minute the significance of this from the scriptures. But, um, yeah, there's, they're talking about here the, uh, they're, the UAE and Bahrain, that you don't have to reject Israel and its presence in the region to have sympathy for the cause of Palestine. Um, oh, well, we should be respectful of other peoples and everything else there. Well, that's actually denying scripture. Um, Just trying to see what else I should read here. Uh, okay, Turkey and Qatar have formed an axis that is opposed to the UAE and its interests across the region. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to read here. I'm not going to go through everything because it's a lot of stuff. Um, But you know, it talks about the thing of the Palestine Palestinians and the and their relations and whatever else. And um, uh, here's another thing that they have both highlighted. I think what was more important was the need to do need to do both Trump and BB a favor politically as both struggle in their unstable domestic political arenas. Um, but. The whole point is here, you go through the article, you can read the whole article there, um, the links up here, the Foreign Policy Research Institute. What they're doing here is what this man is being, him and these two guys working together, um, what they're doing is they're overthrowing the scriptures, uh, which is ironic because the scriptures are actually more in favor of Israel on this. Um, it talks about the two... Um, Verse 23 here, Galatians chapter 4, verse 23. But he who was of, well, I'll go up to verse 22. Um, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Now, I don't believe that he's purely Jewish. I think he'd be mingled. Um, but the whole point is the descendants of Hagar and Abraham are the, what would be called like the Arabic type races. And then the one that comes from Isaac, or uh Sarah and Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, would be Isaac. So we have Ishmael, Ishmaelites, and descendants of Isaac. Like I said, I don't think he is. I think um, there's some mingling there. So not truly a pure Jew. Um, but the scripture teaches here that there are two sons. All right. And 
Verse 30 says here, Galatians chapter 4, verse 30. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So, according to the scriptures, the bond women, the son of the bond women, the des descendants of Ishmael, are not supposed to have any right to that land of Israel over there. And I realize all the implications and all the stuff, the Masonic stuff, the things that are going on here, the scheming and everything else. Um, I understand it. Okay, and all they're not all of Israel, which are in Israel, I get it. There's the synagogue of Satan, which say that they are Jews and are not. I understand all those different things. It's a very, uh, you know, difficult subject to preach about and things. But I have over the years, I've discussed all of this stuff. But I just find it interesting that with all of this, that Trump just got the blood on the tip of his ear and these other seeming things, like I was talking about in the walk and talk earlier. Um, I just find it kind of interesting that it's lining up with this this bigger picture of what the Antichrist is basically going to be doing and by bringing in this um, Abraham Accord thing they're essentially denying what the Bible teaches so I, I don't know it's it, you know leave me your thoughts down in the comment section down below about what you think of this whole thing um, another article that uh, both my wife and my son both went through they both uh, you know, I'll show you these two again here. They both, um, you know, trying to help me out with my research and things, which I really appreciate. And um, you'll find this one interesting. Here we have this article. Let me zoom in on it here a little bit. This is the National Catholic Register. Catholic priest prayed for Donald Trump's safety at PA rally moments before shooting. The priest said that the Trump campaign contacted him a few days ago and asked him to offer a benediction at the rally. There he is right there, Father Jason Charon, um, called him man upon the earth, Father, okay, as a, in a religious title. Catholics just ignore that. Well, it doesn't mean, and they'll, they'll come up with some ex description, but they can't handle the text, so they just have to pervert it. But this is July 14th, 2024. The Catholic, Catholic priest who gave a benediction during former President Donald Trump's rally Saturday told people they needed to pray for Trump's, Trump moments before Trump was shot and wounded. Father Jason Sharon, a Ukrainian Catholic pastor, told CNA a group of about 15 to 20 people called him over to a barricade within the rally site as he was trying to leave shortly before Trump began speaking. I said to them, I prayed for him and his safety, but that they have to pray as well because there are people who want to kill him. Hmm. Father Sharon said in a telephone interview with CNA late Saturday night, and little did I think, literally a few minutes later, there was this kind of indistinct sound and people began leaving. At that point, I heard someone saying that that was a gunshot. A gunman trying to kill Trump firing several times at the former president, hitting the top of his right ear while killing a spectator and wounding two more, authorities said. Father Sharon said he met briefly with Trump before the former president went out to address the crowd at the rally which took place in an outdoor venue at Butler Farm Show in Butler County, Pennsylvania. I spoke with him regarding the situation in Ukraine and shook his hand. It wasn't a very in-depth conversation, Father Sharon said. Um, the priest told CNA that the Trump campaign contacted him a few days ago and asked him to offer a benediction at the rally. I thought Trump was a Protestant. Hmm. In an interview that aired on the Pints with Aquinas, sounds like a good thing, Podcast Saturday night, Father Sharon recounted the prayer he offered at the event. My prayer was one for of protection. Almost like he had foreknowledge, but that wouldn't be possible because it's all just lone wolf stuff. You know, magic bullet theories, lone wolf, disgruntled person does the shooting, he's shot, and everything's solved. We go back to the safe world that we have always lived in. My prayer there was for the restoration of right relationships in our society, relationships at the individual level, at the familial level, at the societal level, such that our nation, national, nation, I guess, would be made great again in God's sight. Uh, could you give me some uh, book, chapter, and verse on that, please, in the scriptures, where America is going to come back at the end and everything? And our nation may be made great again. I said that our world be made great again in God's sight. Father Sharon said. A uh, little ignorant of Bible prophecy there. 
All this presupposes that people, first of all, begin to live their daily lives in accordance with God's will, the priest added. Father Sharon said he is aware of Trump's policy pronouncements that conflict with Catholic teaching, including Trump's recent statements saying he favors the availability of abortion pills, but he alluded to Trump's pro-life actions, which include while he was president appointing three U.S. Supreme Court justices who helped form a majority that overturned Roe v. Wade in June 2022, which enabled states to ban abortion. Um, still haven't seen a whole lot of that stuff, but that's another issue. I won't get into that right now. But um, kind of, again, the hypocritical stand here that Catholics often take. Well, yeah, Donald Trump, he, you know, did this thing to help stop abortion, but he's okay with abortion pills. Well, then it's just political scheming. If people are going to wonder why I was at a Trump rally, it wasn't to canonize him or absolve him from his many imperfections, Father Schoen told CNA. His recent shyness on champion, championing pro-life legislation is undesirable, and it's not for that that I'm here, there, but to encourage him to build up the to build on the pro-life victories of his first administration, he said. Uh, Father Sharon was ordained to the priesthood in the Ukrainian Catholic Church for the Diocese of St. Josephat in 2008. He has served in parishes in North Carolina, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, and is currently pastor of the Holy Trinity Ukrainian Catholic Church in Carnegie, Pennsylvania, and Our Lady of Perpetual Hell, uh, uh, Help excuse me, in Wheeling, West Virginia. <laughs> had to put that in there. I had to read down here to this part, the Holy Trinity thing. But, uh, hmm, uh, why did they have a Catholic priest come and pray for Trump's safety before the whole thing happened? And uh, if Trump wins, going forward, watch the connections with the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church and the Jews that serve the Pope. Myrie Clay and the Iron, the Roman Catholic Church and the Jews. And look at the connections between the two. And like I said, I want to hear your thoughts and your comments on this whole thing of this blood on the right tip of the ear. And it doesn't look like there's any hole in his ear or anything else. Um, the sacrificing of the innocent man. The blood on Trump's right ear. Heading into the election time that's going to be seeing a lot of people sacrificed for globalism. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.